Well, welcome to this video lecture on um, entropy change for an incompressible substance. So if you take a look at the screen here, you'll see a picture of, this is actually an old steam locomotive that had a boiler explosion. So here's the locomotive. The boiler would have been right in this spot here. You can see all these pipes. These are pipes that are used in the heat exchanger in the boil, boiler. So you would burn some coal, presumably, uh, that would generate some heat that would vaporize the water in these pipes. So the pipes would pass by the burning coal. They would heat up the water. It would go from a liquid state into a vapor state. And then, you know, that would be used to turn pistons, etc., to, to make the train move. But there was apparently an explosion. And you can see quite a bit of damage, a very impressive looking uh, explosion that's occurred here. It doesn't really have anything to do with today's material. Uh, I just, since we've been talking a lot about boilers and power cycles and things like that, I thought this was kind of an interesting picture related to that. And by the way, if you're interested in seeing a, another kind of interesting related topic associated with turning liquid water into vapor and, you know, the energy stored in that, you might want to take a look at this Mythbusters hot water heater rocket video clip. That was an interesting one. It's about uh, a household hot water heater where I think they what they did is they sealed off the pressure relief valve. So they put some energy into that hot water heater, into the liquid water within the hot water heater, and uh, through presumably through to an electric resistance element. So they put energy into it and the water starts to vaporize and it builds up a tremendous amount of pressure and the the hot water heater basically explodes. Part of it pops off, and this thing is very impressive uh, how it goes into the air kind of like a rocket. So anyway, take a look at that video. It's kind of interesting. So what we're going to focus on today is the specific entropy change for an incompressible substance. Remember, an incompressible substance is just a model for reality. It's not exactly reality. It's an approximation to reality. And we use the incompressible substance model often for liquids and solids, things that are pretty close to being incompressible. So what we're going to do is we're going to make use of the TDS, one of the TDS equations we derived in the last video lecture, combine it with some expressions from our incompressible model that we've talked about already, and then we'll get a nice expression that we can use for calculating entropy change. So here we are. This is the TDS equation we're going to start with. This comes from our prior lecture on deriving the TDS equations. And specifically, we're going to make use of some expressions from the incompressible substance model. Re recall for an incompressible substance, the change in specific volume is zero. Just That means the specific volume remains constant. It's incompressible, so that makes sense. And then the change in specific internal energy is only a function of temperature. It's a specific heat. There's just one specific heat for an incompressible substance. And that, in general, can be a function of temperature. So it's that specific heat times a small change in temperature gives you a small change in the specific internal energy. So these are part of our incompressible substance model. And what we're going to do is we're going to substitute them in right up in here. So we'll take this, plug it into there, and then we'll take this and plug it into there. Right, so then what we're left with is TDS is C specific heat, which is a function of temperature times dt. And then we'll just rearrange that so you get DS is CT times dt over t. So that's how we relate a small change in specific entropy to temperature for an incompressible substance. And then we could integrate that. So we'll get delta S, be like S2 minus S1, is equal to the integral from T1 to T2 of CT dt over t. So this is the change in entropy for an incompressible substance. So in order to evaluate what the change in specific entropy is, you'd need to know how the specific heat varies with temperature and then perform this integral. Now in many cases, the change in temperature isn't that large, in which case we can often assume that the specific heat is a constant over that temperature range. So if we can assume the specific heat is roughly being constant. Again, if the temperature range isn't that much and, you know, what is, what's a small enough temperature range? Well, that just depends on the material you're dealing with. It's, 
it will vary from material to material, but something on the order of, you know, 100, maybe 200 Kelvin temperature range, temperature difference range, that might be small enough to assume that the specific heat's a constant. But if, if we can assume the specific heat is a constant, then what we can do is pull this specific heat out of the integral, out front, and then what happens is the delta S becomes C times the natural log of T2 over T1. So that expression is for an incompressible substance and C is a constant. Specific heat is a constant. Okay, so that's, that's our uh, expression for the change in specific entropy for an incompressible substance. Uh, first of all, one thing that you see is it's just a function of temperature. So specific it's only a function of temperature. It's a convenient relation to work with. This is why we develop models. Um, you know, our most accurate properties will come from property tables. So if you wanted the most accurate value for the specific entropy for some liquid, you're, it's best to just look it up in a property table if one is available. Now, it's inconvenient to do that all the time. And so sometimes, especially in analytical derivations, it's just more convenient to work with a model. And so that's why we come up with the incompressible substance model. It's an approximation to reality, but it's a convenient one, and it's often pretty good. And so that's what this model is. It's just a relation between specific entropy and temperature. It's a little more convenient to work with than using tables. And especially if you can treat the specific heat as being a constant, then it's a very easy relationship to work with. Again, specific change in the change in specific entropy is just a function of temperature here. And it's actually a pretty easy function to evaluate. You know, you could do that using a handheld calculator. So it's pretty straightforward. Okay, and just uh, as a reminder for the incompressible substance model, I just tried to summarize all of it down here. So liquids and solids are often approximated as being incompressible. It's an approximation to reality. For the incompressible substance model, the specific volume is a constant. That's what it means to be incompressible. We only have one specific heat. There is no CV and CP. They're, they're the same thing. And it's uh, just, so we could just call it C. It's a function of temperature in general. And then the specific internal energy is a function of temperature. The specific enthalpy is a function of temperature and pressure. And we, as we just saw, the specific entropy is a function only of temperature. To get the change in the specific internal energy, it's just the integral of C dt. We talked about that in a previous lecture. The change in specific enthalpy is the change in specific uh, internal energy times the change in pressure times specific volume. And then the change in specific entropy is the integral of C dt over t. We just talked about that just a moment ago. And if the temperature range isn't too large, then it's reasonable to assume the specific heat's a constant. And so this integral, you can pull the C outside the integral, and so it becomes C times delta t for delta u. For this specific enthalpy, it'll still be the delta U, which is C times delta T. And then this just looks the same, delta P times V. And then as we just talked about, the change in specific entropy is just uh, equal to C natural log T2 over T1. So that's just a, a recap of our what we have for our incompressible substance model. Okay, we'll just end the lecture there.